Are you new to 3D printing and having trouble with your Ender 3? Well, here's solutions to five of the most common problems you're most likely to experience. The Ender 3 has been cheap enough to entice a lot of new people into 3D printing. A lot of them are loving their new hobby and having success, but there's also a lot of people posting desperately on forums because they can't get the thing to work. Hopefully in this video, I'm gonna be able to help you a lot. We're gonna look at how to prevent extruder clogs, how to fit moving carriages that are too tight or too loose, how to fix a non-square wobbly frame, how to level the bed, and if you've got a warp bed, how to compensate for this with manual mesh bed leveling. Now, one of the take home messages here is to get support from the right people. There are heaps of 3D printing communities around. And as long as you're courteous, polite, and willing to search before you post, you'll find people ready to bend over backwards to help you. In most of the Facebook groups, if you click on the files section, you'll find that people have very generously posted their slicing profiles for various slicing software. On to issue one, fixing and preventing extruder clogs. Case in point, this is based on the work of a community member, Luke Hatfield, who frequently resides the official Creality Facebook group. He reached out to me and asked me to include the following procedure in my guide to further help with the community, which he's already doing himself to a great, great extent. So here is a copy of the Ender 3 troubleshooting guide by Luke Hatfield, and you can see everything is laid out logically. It's got a nice table of contents. There's a lot of questions and answers. The one we're going to address is nozzle clog or filament drag issues. Now there's actually a new version of this coming out and Luke's been kind enough to send me the updated one so I can feature it in this video. And this is a great illustration of the problem we're trying to address here. This is a great picture here. The PTFE tube is meant to go inside the nozzle, but if there's a little gap there, it can basically pull and then clog your nozzle. It'll look fine from the outside, but then all of a sudden you'll have a lot of trouble getting your printer to extrude or even pulling the filament out by hand. Now there's a complete procedure here that takes you through how to repair this problem here. Mine isn't doing that, so I'm just gonna do the last part of the procedure, and that is making sure the PTF tube is seated very nicely inside the nozzle. I've started by bringing the extruder up to temp and also removing the two bolts that hold the fan cover on. After this, I'm gonna get my spanner and loosen about three quarters of a turn my top PTFE fitting. Now I'm gonna push the tube down as far as it can go. And you might've seen this before, I've printed this in a previous video, but this little pressure fix can be used or a cable tie. And you're gonna slot it in and that should lock the fittings so the tube can't move up and down at all. After that, we're gonna get our spanner, righty tidy it back together, and now it should be locked in quite solid. The two assembly screws on the side need to be removed to stop heat from traveling up into the area that's not meant to be hot. We're gonna tighten the grub screw, being careful not to strip it. And then after that, if you're careful, you should be able to pry the edge under to loosen the two screws. And then the fiddly bit is still to come. After you've got them out, they'll be dangling there, caught in the captain tape. But if you pull it back and get out some pliers, you'll be able to carefully pull it free. Now everything is done. Keep those screws in case you need to do this again later on and reinstall your fan cover. And in my case, cable tie your BL touch out of the way. Now that should be time well spent in avoiding future issues. A reminder that a copy of that can be found in the file section of the official Creality 3D printing group. Our next couple of procedures are gonna be considerably more straightforward. So let's get onto them, starting with fixing loose or too tight moving carriages. My first Ender 3 needed no adjustment, but my Ender 3 Pro arrived with a very loose Y carriage and a very tight X carriage. Here's how to fix that. With the V-slot extrusion and roller system used on a lot of 3D printers, each one has three rubber wheels that they roll on. One of those wheels is mounted on a hexagon eccentric nut, and this is what we're gonna to use to adjust. For the X axis, it's found on the bottom. For the Z, there's one on the left and right on the inside. And for the Y, you need to look underneath to locate the two adjustment ones there. The following procedure is exactly the same for any of these, but I'm gonna demonstrate it on the X carriage because it's the easiest to film and access. You'll find that when you turn your spanner in one direction, it gets a lot tighter. When you turn it in the other direction, it gets a lot looser. You see here that I've loosened it, that it introduced a great deal of play. So to fix that, all I need to do is turn it back the other way. However, if you turn it too tight, it will become so tight that the carriage is hard to move by hand. This is something you're trying to avoid. If yours is hard to move by hand, please loosen it off maybe half a turn until everything goes smoothly. If you do leave it that tight, the printer will still run, but you'll introduce wear with grooves on your rollers. Hopefully if you had something too loose or too tight, you now know how to fix it. Let's move on to our next one, which is fixing a wobbly frame after we assemble the printer. Now my Ender 3 Pro came with this quite badly, but I haven't really fixed it until now because I don't think it really causes any print issues. Nevertheless, I'm gonna fix it for you with the following steps. 
your printer is very wobbly like mine is here, fortunately it's an easy fix. You're simply going to loosen the two bolts on each side to loosen up the frame and then you're going to apply pressure by leaning on it on top as you tighten them back up. In my case it didn't quite fix it and it was still a little bit wobbly so what I had to do was loosen the ones on the top on the bottom, let it settle and then after I tightened them back up finally the wobble was gone. All fixed, so it's time to move on to the number one problem for most first time 3D printers, and that is leveling the bed. There's different ways to do it, this one definitely works for me, and I'd like to start by pointing out that leveling the bed is probably not the best choice of terminology, even though it's commonly used. You're not going to get a spirit level and put it on top of the bed and get it flat and parallel according to that bubble. Instead, what we're doing is probably more accurately described as tramming, because we're trying to get the bed level with the carriage and therefore the nozzle above it. If something in the X carriage for the nozzle was a little bit off, then we want our bed to match so the nozzle can remain at the correct height the whole way along. There's several ways to do this. The method I like to use is to start by leveling with a piece of paper, starting a test print and adjusting everything live. Essentially what you're looking for is a good amount of squish with the plastic on the first layer. If your nozzle is in midair, your bed is not leveled. If it's squished down so much that the plastic has become one with the build surface, your bed is not leveled. A good way of knowing that you're close to spot on is that when it comes around to do multiple perimeters, there's no gaps between them or over extrusion where lumps are formed from them being jammed too close together. Let's get into it. Here I'm taking one for the team by restoring the bed to how it comes from factory completely wound down. We're going to level this from scratch. The first thing you should do is heat everything up because stuff expands and therefore you want it to be close to the printing conditions as possible. After that you're going to do an auto home and then go to the menu and disable steppers. That means you'll be able to move everything freely and what you're going to do is move it slightly into the corner and then get out a piece of paper or a feeler gauge if you've got one. Twisting clockwise will raid the bed and counterclockwise will lower it. We're going to twist it until the piece of paper is just being caught in between the bed and the nozzle and then we're going to move it over to the next corner and repeat the same thing. After we've done the first three corners, it's a good idea to go back to the first one. You'll find that moving one moves the others and when I came back to points one and two, the paper no longer fit underneath. So go around a couple of times as you need to and then you're ready to do your first test print. Now it doesn't have to be perfect at this stage and I'm fairly conservative in not getting the paper to grab very much. That's because I'd rather have the nozzle too high than be too low and gouge a big hole in my print surface. All you need at this stage is a nice base point to modify as you do a live print. Here I've chosen 100mm X. As it starts to print I'm watching like a hawk and I'm also rubbing with my finger to see how well adhered the filament is to the top surface. If I think it's too far I continue to turn clockwise as the print is happening and what I'm looking for as it comes around for the second and third perimeter is to get rid of any gaps between them. Now the infill is done last and I think I had it pretty down pat by that stage. As you can see the skirt however is very gappy and hardly stuck to the bed at all. When I try and peel it off, it explodes and that's a good sign that the nozzle was too far away at that point. So after live adjusting throughout that first print, I think by the end I had things pretty spot on. I always run a second print of the exact same thing to test if that's true. Here goes round two. I think I can spot a tiny little gap there, so I make a very small adjustment as it's printing. When it's finished, however, it looks pretty ideal. When I peel it off, it stays intact, and when we compare it to the previous one, we can see that everything's in one piece and fairly flat, whereas the old one, everything was in pieces. Job done. Hopefully that's helpful for you, and yes, it does take a little bit of experience to know when it's just right. Just keep on persevering, and soon you'll find this a very straightforward procedure. I do hear you saying, however, Michael, my bed is not level, my platform is bent. Well, me too. Here are the results of probing my bed with the BL Touch and the Bed Visualizer plugin. As you can see, it dips in the middle. And if I try and do the full print without auto bed leveling turned on, it's stuck on the edges, but it's just not adhered in the middle because of the dip. Now, previously for the Ender 3, I've covered the Easy ABL and the BL Touch twice, in fact, to overcome this issue. There is however another way and that's manual mesh bed leveling and the best thing is it doesn't cost a cent. The following procedure is going to show you exactly what you need to do in the firmware but don't worry it's only four steps and I'll put them in the description to make it as easy to follow as possible. I'm going to assume that you followed my burning a bootloader guide and you've also followed my guide for setting up vanilla marlin because that's where this next bit is going to pick up from. We're going to start by searching for the word manual and that's going to take us to manual probe. And as it says, it's a means to do auto bed leveling without a probe. At the moment, it's commented out, which is these two slashes here. And that means it's going to be ignored when the firmware is compiled. So we're simply going to delete the two slashes and now it will be included. Now it's given us a hint to the next thing we're going to do. We're going to do it through the LCD controller. So I'm going to copy this LCD underscore 
bed underscore leveling. I'm gonna go control F to find again. It's pasted it in automatically, so I'm gonna hit find. And once again, I'm going to uncomment that. Should be only one thing left to do, and that's to tell it what type of bed leveling we're going to employ. Let's search again for the word mesh. Now here we have five options. Some of these are only available if you're using a proper probe, but for us, we're doing the mesh bed leveling. And that's, as it says, probing a grid manually. So we're gonna once again, uncomment our last line, define mesh bed leveling. A reminder that you need to have Sanguino selected and 18 mega 1284p. Now we can hit compile to test if everything's okay. Now, unfortunately, we have an error here. We're over by 2,200 bytes. Not to worry, that's a pretty easy fix. We're gonna to switch to configuration underscore ADV. We're gonna go control F and type in arc. And that is gonna take us to this section here called arc support. All we need to do is comment out the first line, define arc support. Now when we compile, we should have enough space. So we can see that it's done compiling. That means we're ready to plug in our printer, select our COM port, and now we can hit upload. That's the firmware done and uploaded. So let's have a look what we actually need to do on the printer to do a manual mesh bed level. You'll notice in your LCD menu under prepare, you'll have a brand new option called bed leveling and we're gonna go to level bed. It's gonna home and then it's gonna go to the first point of nine, which is in the lower left hand corner. Time to get out our piece of paper again. Once again, we're gonna put it underneath and we're gonna this time turn the dial right to raise, left to lower until the paper just fits in between. After that, press the button, it'll move to the second point and you're gonna repeat. It's very important not to touch the bed leveling knobs, but instead use the LCD control to set the height for each point. Eventually you will be done and you're ready to set your fade height. 20 mils is good and this controls the fading out of the mesh compensation so it's still not making minor adjustments at the very top of a tall print. Optionally, if you'd like to test it, type in G29S0 and you'll get a readout of your mesh bed leveling results. We're almost ready to do our first print, but first we need to update our start G code. Now our usual G28 to home all of the axis by default in Marlin will negate any saved mesh bed leveling. Therefore we need to add M420 S1 after G28 in our starting G code, and that will tell Marlin to retrieve the stored mesh bed leveling and use it as it does the first layer of the following print. It's very subtle, but you can see the Z axis is moving to lift the nozzle up and down to compensate for the measured differences when you did the manual mesh bed leveling. There's only one problem, however, our first layer is not sticking at all, so we still need to set our Z bed offset. This is exactly what needs to be done with a BL touch or any other automatic bed leveling probe. Only one more thing to tweak, I promise. We're gonna start a print again, and this time as it's printing, we're gonna go to that same menu and go to the bed Z option to make our adjustment. Back in that same bed leveling menu, we turn it to the left to lower and to the right to raise until we find the perfect value to get the right amount of squish. Just like with normal bed leveling, I like to play with it throughout the first print and hopefully by the end of that print, I'll have everything where it needs to be. To verify this, I'll run the same print immediately after and test that everything is how it should be. Second time around, you can see our print turned out really well. Previously, it wasn't stuck in the middle, but it was stuck almost too much on the edges. Now it's quite uniform the whole way across, which means the system is working. You can see here, I probably had it just a little bit too close because there is some mild over extrusion. If you're happy with everything, make sure you go to the control part of your LCD menu and store your values so they'll be there next time you restart the printer. You might be thinking, well, why would I need a BL touch or easy ABL? Well, there are a couple of advantages. Those systems probe the bed at the start of every print and only takes about 30 seconds or so. If something has shifted, perhaps a removable bed not back on straight, it will pick those up and adjust for them automatically every time. With this system, if you're careful and nothing moves, you should only have to do it every now and again, but it's definitely not as streamlined. One other thing to note with this system is it relies on the accuracy of you adjusting and feeling that piece of paper sliding underneath. If you get that off, the whole system is gonna fall down. That's it for this one. I've tried to make it comprehensive, but also make it as short and concise as possible so it's as valuable as possible moving forward. Hats off to Luke Hatfield and other great people in the community who are willing to put in the time and effort to help all the new 3D printer users. If you're new to the hobby and having trouble, hopefully this video can help you, but don't give up. 3D printing is an immensely rewarding hobby and I trust if you stick with it, you're gonna really have a great time. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing.
G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.